first scripture, scripture reading this morning is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9, and continuing with verses 19 through 24. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has driven me away and made me walk in darkness rather than light. Indeed, he has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. He has made my skin and my flesh grow old and has broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. He has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead. He has walled me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Even when I cry out, or, excuse me, even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my paths crooked. I remember my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, Chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My name is Cain. I'm a wanderer. I don't know how my story will end, but I know how it began. In the beginning, my parents lived in God. It was beautiful. It had everything you could imagine. It was luscious, lovely. Everything you could ever want was provided. They had food. Security, comfort. What my parents told me they enjoyed most was that God was with them all the time. And he gave them all this for free. There's no requirements, no obligations, no commands, save one. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> for if you do, you will surely die. A very simple request. Anyone could eat up all the other foods and not that one, but no, no, no. God knew my parents wouldn't be able to resist. I didn't let them eat anyone. So they were cast out of the garden. Angels and fiery swords, and the land that they entered into was cursed. No longer did the ground yield up its fruits and vegetables for them. Thorns and thistles took over the paths. 
boulders and crags seem to multiply, and the dark skies at night, which used to be a peace, became a terror. And the darkness is belted deep in their hearts, because they knew, they knew that when they tasted that fruit, they had discovered evil. I knew that I was going to have to grow up fast. I knew that when I was born, I became a living, walking reminder of all that they had lost. Because they had turned away from God and turned to depend on each other, and in their lust and sensuality, they conceived me and brought me into the world. So all I ever did was become a walking symbol of sin at their feet. I worked hard. I earned my keep. I took to that soil and I plowed it. I plowed it and I sowed and I reaped and I gathered in the bounty. I brought life out of the ground again. I was the one that farmed and I said, it doesn't matter what you have to do, I will get it done. I cleared the stones. I brought forth fruits and vegetables. I lifted them out of the ground. I protected them from pests and fungus and mildew and all the droughts that we had, I did it. Every day I was out there from sunrise until sunset. And it was good for me. My parents had another child, Abel. They lifted him up as the paragon of everything good in the world. He was gonna be the savior of everything. He was the one that could do no wrong. Did he help me in the fields? No. He just wandered off with his sheep. He didn't know what it meant to do backbreaking labor day after day. He just walked over hills and down ravines looking for grass and water, and his sheep would go around with him and eat and be stinky and awful. I made sure there was food on the table every night. Every ounce of bread I know. Every crop of grain, every crop of fruits and vegetables, all the nut trees that I planted, all the berries that I collected, every day. We had meat occasionally, but it was scarce. It was okay. But I was the one doing the work. I was the one who was saving everyone. But you see, God wasn't with us much in those days. He came by occasionally, and one day he came by out of the blue and said, he'd like an offering. You kicked my parents out of the garden of Eden, and you cursed the ground that we walk on, and you haven't been around us lately, and now you want an offering. But how could I resist? To have a taste of what paradise would have been like. I wanted that. I wanted to know what it was like before my parents ruined everything. So I decided I would put together the most magnificent offering. It was going to be delicious. It was going to be beautiful. It was going to be a perfect paragon of all God had really intended for this ground, for this land. So I went and I spent days cultivating, pruning, and clipping just the right food at just the right time. Oh, it was luscious. The vegetables were crisp and bright. The fruits were soft and delicious, and it was, it was going to be perfect. God was going to be impressed at how much I was able to do with this cursed ground of his. So I brought my offering. And Abel, poor pathetic sucker, he just killed a couple of his little sheep and brought them. When I saw that bloody mess, I was like, why would God look on here on this? What could God possibly want with this? Obviously, Abel was going to get cast out forever. This was not even a contest anymore. So we came, and we sat down. And as we sat and as we waited, I saw Abel come down, and poor baby, he started to cry. And I said, what's the matter, Abel? Are you regretting your offering? 
And he said, no, this offering isn't for God. He said, what? He said to me, I brought this offering for us, King. I wanted to ask God for, to forgive us for the ways that we had let him down. And maybe say we're sorry. And that the innocent blood here might in some way take some of our burden. And that God might give some of that innocence and life back to us. I just stared at the boat for a long time. I didn't know what to say. <coughs> but I knew God would be happy. Can't take my sin. I was thinking. God came. All right, brother, it's time. <laughs> As we lifted our offerings, we felt the light of God upon us. It rose, the warmth of his presence breathed by us. And then the light went down. And the breeze passed, and it got cold. And I felt hollow. What happened? Where did God go? He was crying again. But his tears were different. He wasn't crying because he was ashamed. He was crying because of gratitude. I fumed. I was so angry. I stormed home and I told my parents, you know what God did? God didn't accept my offering. I worked my hardest for that. I toiled. I slaved every day. I thought I was doing what God wanted. I thought I was giving what God needed. I was proving myself. I was able to do this, God. I was doing it on my own. Why wasn't that good enough? What did you really want, God? What did he want? But he accepted Abel's offering. And you know what Abel's offering was? It was some dead, flaccid sheep. Bloody mess. And God said, I like that one more. What does that mean for me? Should I not farm anymore? Should I just wander around in the fields and be like, you know what, God, fine, I don't want to work anymore. I'm just going to wander around with these sinky sheep. And he wanted to take away sin. Well, guess what, Mom and Dad? Abel can't take away sin. Some lambs can't take away sin. Because the sin we have is inherited. It's in us. And we got it from you. When you took that fruit, poisoned it for the rest of us. Abel just needs to learn, life is pain. You make your own way, because obviously God doesn't care about us anymore. That's it. As I was walking, God came alongside me, and I shrugged off his horn. He said, why is your face downcast? And why are you upset? I said, I'll tell you why I'm upset. Because you accepted Abel's offering over mine. You showed favor to him. You could have accepted my offering too. It was just as good from what I had done. Why was my work not good enough for you? I started to leave, but then God said, Be careful, Kate. Sin is crouching at your door. And his desire is to master you. But you must master it. And I turned around and I said to God, my parents who were perfect in the Garden of Eden couldn't master it. How do you expect me to? And I stormed off. And as I was storming, I saw Abel. So I grabbed him. I said, let's go out to the field. We're taking a walk. And we walked. And a part of me really wanted to know why he brought that off. What was it about that lamb that he brought? Was there something that I missed that God really wanted? But the more he talked, the farther away from God I felt. Every time he said how grateful he was that God accepted his offering, he just made my blood boil. Every time he talked about what he was going to do next, it just made my 
face feel like everything's daggers. And I didn't know what to do anymore. Just like I'm so angry and jealous, and then I didn't know what happened. And then something inside me just snapped. <coughs> And when I came to, a rock slipped out of my bloody hand and thudded the soft dirt next to Abel's body. Abel deserved to die. He had it coming. Now I had to decide what I was going to tell my parents. God came and found me again, and I just didn't want to hear it. He said, where is your brother Abel? And I said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper now? And God said, what have you done, Cain? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. You are cursed from the ground that opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. No longer will the ground yield up any more crops for you ever. You will be the wanderer cursed on the face of the earth. No. No. You can't get out of your presence, but I can't not work. What am I supposed to do? I'm just going to wander around and... And so whoever sees me on the road is going to kill me. How long is this going to... What am I going to do, God? And God said, you don't have to worry about anyone killing me. For I will put my mark on you. And anyone who harms you will suffer a sevenfold vengeance. So I died. And now I want. I think about Abel. I feel like I just have this sin that weighs around my neck and I drag behind me everywhere I go. Do you think his offering could have worked for me? Or did God always know this was the way it was going to end? Does God have some other spiteful plan for me to end all of this mess that you started? And the words of Abel come back to me. Pathetic and weak as he was. He, was, like, he couldn't deal with the hardships of life. I could deal with the hardships of life. Hardships I brought about myself, hardships that could have been avoided, but hardships that haunt my every step. Abel said, the weight of sin is heavy upon me, brother, as I see it weighs upon you. We cannot bear the weight of sin on our own. Perhaps we cannot bear the weight of sin alone, brother. Abel. Perhaps not. Perhaps not 